Soon after World War II ended, the U.S. military began building massive military bases in Europe and shipped families to Europe to accompany servicemen. These bases grew into American cities that are great fun, but very costly and reduce the readiness of units. Should war occur in Europe, military units there will remain dysfunctional for weeks until their families are safely back in the United States. This assumes children are not killed or maimed by missile or commando attacks, since these bases would be the main enemy target during a war. Generals know this, but European tours are too much fun, and those who profit from this racket have the political clout to derail efforts at reform. Few Americans know that billions of dollars are spent each year to maintain unneeded military cities in Europe. While the infrastructure of the United States declines, billions of dollars are spent each year on projects in wealthy nations like Germany that employ tens of thousands of foreigners. Germany spends less than 2% of its GDP on national defense, while the United States spends 8% when all national security expenses are counted. While the United States spends billions of dollars each year to maintain military units in Europe, wealthy host nations do not even provide facilities for them. Demanding that allies share the cost of basing American troops overseas is popular with American voters. However, efforts are derailed by generals living in expensive villas and contractors who collect billions of dollars a year. The first NATO commander was General Dwight Eisenhower. After assuming that post in 1951, General Eisenhower wrote about NATO's goal, quote, If in 10 years, all American troops stationed in Europe for national defense purposes have not been returned to the United States, then this whole project will have failed. It did fail because seven decades later, long after the Soviet Union dissolved, NATO still exists with thousands of American troops deployed throughout Europe. Even after 70 years of American troops in Europe, political support for a perpetual American presence remains strong in the U.S. Congress. More than 64,000 American troops are stationed in Germany, plus 16,000 American civilian employees who employ a greater number of German workers. Housing projects already underway will cost $1.2 billion through 2027, which involve the construction of 1,300 new homes and improvements at 3,500 existing units. Most of the spending is unnecessary. The United States could save billions of dollars a year and increase the readiness of units by eliminating redundant headquarters in Europe, closing unneeded bases, and keeping military families in the United States. For example, NATO has a new massive headquarters complex in Belgium, commanded by an American four-star general. Yet the United States maintains a separate massive headquarters complex in Stuttgart, Germany, called the European Command, commanded by the same general. Given that the United States cannot conduct military operations in Europe outside of NATO, the European Command headquarters can drastically downsize and merge with NATO headquarters in Belgium. Read the article linked below for details. In addition, there are bases with little utility that should have closed a decade ago. For example, most of the fighter aircraft at the U.S. Air Force's Spangdalim Air Base left after the Cold War ended. Yet the air base remains with just 12 deployable fighter aircraft supported by 15,000 airmen, civilian employees, and family members. Even though fighter aircraft from South Carolina can fly to Germany within hours. The Air Force should transfer this unneeded air base to Germany that can maintain it for visiting NATO forces and move those aircraft to other air bases. Read the article link below for details. Another massive waste of money is the shipping of military families and their pets, cars, and household goods to expensive Europe for three-year tours. This doubles base support costs, especially the school system. In Germany, the U.S. Defense Department operates 31 schools with 14,724 students and pays an equal number of people to teach and operate these schools. See the link below for details. There are also thousands of preschool children and spouses that bases must support. 
If it takes almost a year to build a dream house, imagine what it takes to build an entire community. In a little more than a year, the Army's Corps of Engineers and German construction firms have built over 250 new houses for a new town in Grafenbeer called Netzeburg. There was a lot of hard work, and a lot of times it didn't seem like things would come to fruition, but now we're starting to see things crop up. And that is swell. Um, I don't think that any soldier who comes from the States or from a community here in Europe has ever received such state-of-the-art housing with such quality, uh, with so many amenities. By 2008, 830 new homes will line the streets of this new community, equipped with dual-voltage outlets and state-of-the-art German construction. Reporting for AFM, this is Specialist Kenya Kraus, Grafenbeer, Germany. If war ever occurs, military units will be unable to focus on fighting until all these family members are evacuated to the United States. This would not be an issue if American troops deploy to Europe on one-year unaccompanied tours or are with unit rotations. Troops can take 30 days of leave halfway through this year to visit their family stateside. Generals could still bring families as they lead longer tours to maintain close relationships with Allied generals but all others should remain stateside. During the Trump administration, the American empire declared Russia, China, and Iran enemies. The chairman of the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark Miley, was forced to evaluate the need to maintain 800 American military bases overseas with 220,000 personnel. He declared, quote, there's a considerable amount that the United States expends on overseas deployments, on overseas bases and locations. Is every one of those absolutely, positively necessary for the defense of the United States? End quote. He said that many of Washington's permanent basing arrangements are, quote, a derivative of where World War II ended. The EBG project that was started in 2004 is nearly halfway complete now. One facility has already opened, the Graf Fitness Center, and doors on other facilities will continue to open until the project is complete around 2009. The, the goal of that project is to produce the facilities that would support an entire brigade's worth of soldiers and their families and the, um, the, the infrastructure needed to support those people. Because this brigade size unit is coming, the amount of soldiers is expected to increase dramatically, going from about 1,000 to about 3,200. There was no holding back for these soldiers and their family members when it came to money. The overall cost of the EBG project, about $700 million. Well, in some cases, I might you know, say it's all relative to what they're used to, but in this case, I would say anybody's going to be impressed with what we're putting in here because it, it's so new and it's so nice. We haven't held back. You know, we're giving them really their money's worth in these facilities. And I think it's as nice as you're going to find in any modern community in the States. For AFN, I'm Army Sergeant Frank Minnie, Grafenbeer, Germany. By 2020, President Donald Trump had rid his administration of empire builders and brought in outside reformers like Douglas McGregor, who advocated common sense changes in Europe. Despite years of demands, Germany had refused to help pay for the basing of American troops. The White House announced in July that 6,400 American troops based in Germany would come home, only around a tenth of the total, while a few thousand more would be redeployed within Europe. The few aircraft at unneeded Spangdalem Air Base would move to Italy, and the redundant U.S.-European headquarters in Stuttgart merged into NATO headquarters in Belgium. Colonel Douglas McGregor served as the Director of Joint Operations Center in the Supreme Headquarters of Allied Europe. He knows it inside and out. He really served there during the 1990 Kosovo campaign. He wrote that book. It's called Margin of Victory. Colonel McGregor joins us right now. Colonel, we got 28 NATO bases. From a military perspective, and if you look at 70 years, there hasn't been a Soviet-slash-Russian invasion. And NATO is beginning to change its objective. Who would have thought there would have been in Afghanistan, having a cyber unit to it. Can you see the positive impact the president's making? Well, I think the, po the president's impact has been positive from the outset. <clears throat> Look, he's delivering a message that is at least two decades overdue. The Europeans have been essentially enjoying defense cost-free for the most part, thanks to the United States. 
<clears throat> we bring the balance of the military power. We provide the command and control. Without us, there is frankly no NATO. And he was absolutely right to talk about Germany. It's not simply a question of funding in Germany. Germany effectively has no armed forces anymore. And you know, the armed they, forces they, you in know, Germany Colonel, are they hopelessly act, demoralized. And they tried to have they tried to have a you know they have a volunteer service. They said, hey guys, we have a budget. Sign up. No Germans signed up. Well, that's that's only part of the problem. The larger problem is that the Germans, thanks to us, don't feel obligated to defend themselves. And the president has simply said, look. Why should the American taxpayer defend you if you aren't willing to defend yourself? This, is th this minor change was strongly attacked by Joe Biden and congressmen from both political parties with wild claims that President Trump was abandoning European allies. In reality, this proposal threatened billions of dollars in annual funding to corporations that make generous campaign contributions to members of Congress. Empire builders return with the administration of President Biden who canceled Trump's attempt at reform and then announced plans to create yet another unneeded headquarters unit in Germany with 500 soldiers and 750 family members that will require millions more dollars in new construction projects.